For the first time ever, Formula One drew more viewers than NASCAR did. Welcome back to Break Hard. My name is Matt. And yes, for the first time ever, Formula One drew more total viewers than NASCAR did on a Sunday. So the Formula One Miami Grand Prix on ABC Sunday drew 3.1 million viewers, the most they've ever had for a broadcast in the United States. NASCAR, meanwhile, from Kansas on FS1, drew 2.3 million viewers. And now, before Stefano Domenicali, Liberty Media, and all of the Drive to Survive fans go on a uh, victory lap, like they're a New York Knicks fan, there's a number of factors to talk about real quick, because I can already feel some of you seething through this camera. To preface, there were a few factors that certainly went into Formula One beating out NASCAR this weekend. The biggest factor had to be the fact that the NASCAR Cup Series race was rain delayed by about three hours. What should have started at 3.15 East Coast time didn't start until after 6 p.m. East Coast time. While that was happening, Formula One went green at 4 p.m. That allowed fans that were going to watch NASCAR to tune in to the Formula One race. So that was certainly a nice benefactor for Formula One. Formula One also had a great lead-in program. That'd be Game 7 uh, in the NBA playoffs between the Mavs and the Magic. That game ate up a lot of the pre-race for Formula One on ABC. So when that game ended, they went to about a seven-minute pre-race, if that, maybe five minutes, right into lights out. So there was no waiting around, really. And they were able to definitely draw in from that audience, which is, again, great win for them. They got incredibly lucky, and they certainly planned it out that way. Having a great lead-in program is always key. There's a reason why networks put their new TV shows on after the Super Bowl, because they know that that audience that was watching the Super Bowl is going to stick around for that. NASCAR, I'm sure, wishes they could have had a lead in uh, of that proportion, but they were running on a rain delay on Saturday night and, you know, really couldn't do that. You also have to throw in the fact that Formula One was on ABC on broadcast television, broadcast or network TV, while the NASCAR race was on FS1, a cable. And as you've, I'm sure, have encountered, whether it's on social or anything, whenever you talk about NASCAR races being on cable, you're just immediately hit with boomers and neckbeards out here constantly being like, I'm not paying extra money to watch NASCAR. Okay, that just is what it is at this point. NASCAR has been doing, I saw one person complain uh, to me on social that they were like, yeah, well, it's because NASCAR is just on too many different channels. NASCAR is on four different channels this year, this schedule. That's been the same way ever since 2001. Even before that, it's been on different channels. They were complaining that the NASCAR race wasn't on Network Fox. Again, they've been going between Fox Network and then either FX or FS1 since 2001. It, it, it's been happening. It's not anything new. So at this point, it's not on the, the network or the sport to try to tell you where it's at. It's very obvious where it's going to be. All of those things went into helping Formula One you know, achieve the number that it did. And hats off to them. Like I said, it's their biggest television audience ever in this country. And it comes at a time where their growth in this country has certainly plateaued, if not started to decline. Again, like I said, there's a number of factors that went into this. And this also was the first race this season that was at a normal time for an American audience. It wasn't at eight o'clock in the morning, 3 a.m., midnight, somewhere around there. So they were able to capitalize on that. Does that mean that the next race at Emla or the Monaco after that is going to be 3 million viewers? Absolutely not. Like, it just won't be. There's, a, like I said, the number of factors that, you know, contributed to it. They also peaked at 3.6 million viewers. Again, hats off. Like I said, biggest audience they've ever had. The sprint race on Saturday drew just under 900,000 viewers, the largest they've ever had for a sprint race audience here in the United States. So ESPN is absolutely going to go out there and parade around, wave their flag and celebrate because they should. They achieved something that I don't think many people thought they could. However, all the people that are, again, like I said, taking this victory lap for Formula One have to keep in mind all of the factors that went into helping Formula One get to this point. Because it's not like the Formula One race was an all-time banger. It wasn't even necessarily good, if we're being completely honest. When you had Max you know, hit the bollard and then catch the safety car while Lando didn't pick up the safety car, was able to pit, get that free pit stop and then regain the lead. It's not like they were battling out on track. And then Lando just drove away from Max. And while we all like to see a new guy win, that's not named Max or stopping. It wasn't because there was a fantastic battle in the lead. 
Was there okay racing mid-pack? Yeah, there was some decent racing mid-pack, and Sky does a great job of making you believe that the battle for 16th place, literally fourth to last, is actually riveting on track when it doesn't really, it doesn't pay any points and it doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things. It's just two guys in an absolute dogfight, and it's fun to watch uh, at times. The NASCAR race on Sunday from Kansas was an all-timer. It was an all-time classic. You remember when you were playing NCA 14 and you'd have a really close game and at the end of it, it'd be like instant classic and, you know, throw up the ESPN classic type of uh, logo on there. That's what Kansas was. As soon as the checker flag fell and Kyle Larson beat Chris Buescher by one one thousandth of a second, that's an instant classic. It, it's a race that will likely never see a finish quite like that ever again. And it was from top to bottom, a fantastic race, the best intermediate race we've seen in the better part of 20 years. It was an exponentially better race than what we saw in Miami. And while they're two different products, one's oval and one's a road course, the entertainment factor for NASCAR in terms of racing was definitely more. Yes, the Formula One race had people that are supposedly famous, and I'm sure they are in their own sex and everything like that. Didn't necessarily know who most of these people are, and that's maybe just on me for not caring. But Outside of that, there was really nothing that happened at the Miami Grand Prix other than just a really ridiculously priced uh, concession stand in the Hard Rock Beach Club, which got everybody on the internet fired up and had people out here white knighting for this race, which was something I never expected, much like a Teresa Earnhardt white knight at that. So, like I said, tip the cap to Formula One and ESPN. They achieved something that I honestly didn't think we'd ever see. After the growth started to plateau last year and then was down at the end of the year and it was down to start off this year, it really seemed like Formula One's time in the United States was not coming to an end, but certainly losing a lot of its momentum. And I'm not saying that this has gained that momentum back. So congrats to them. Parade around, put up your social graphics. Everybody can celebrate for the week. Two weeks time when we get back to Imola and that number is back down around a million viewers, then it's like, okay, we've level set and got back to to normal and for nascar they have work to do you need a broadcast partner that is going to present this race better than what fox has unfortunately for mike joy a legend of the sport he's made a number of bad errors this year in terms of commentating just this past weekend he did it again when he was like we're riding on board with kyle bush and it was chris busher very clearly shooting the middle five wide and it's just things like that combined with Kevin Harvick trying to give a poignant point and the camera is just cut to a grill in the infield. And it's like, okay, well, there goes all the momentum for that. Randomly looking at people in the stands, uh, the cartoons, Clint Boyer, and then again, just not presenting the race in a professional manner. Having something like what they have with Anthony Davidson for the Sky Sports uh, monitor where he shows you, you know, a part of the race that happened, how a pass was set up, how something the pit stops happened, how this or whatever, he breaks it down. They desperately need that on the Fox broadcast. But unfortunately, I don't think they understand or, or know really how to incorporate something like that into it. So it's frustrating. But I think having a broadcast partner that kind of presented the race in a more professional tone for lack of a better term that I can think of right now would certainly go a long way. But let me know in the comments what you think about this. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at Break Hard, Instagram and Twitter at Break Hard Blog.